turn your GoPro footage from this to this. First of all, the process used in this video would work with any of the field of view options in the GoPro cameras. If you want to lens correct it in camera, you are limited to the linear option, but if you do it this way, you could use any lens option you want. First of all, you want to download a program called Gyroflow. I'll leave a link to that in the description. Download it, install it, and open it up. Once you're in the program, you want to click here to select your file. And I'll choose this one. And as you can see, straight away, something is already happening. What the program has done is that it has automatically detected what camera and lens I'm shooting with. As you can see here, this is shot on a GoPro Hero 5 Black using the wide lens option. And the program has automatically applied a lens profile that matches this. If the program doesn't automatically recognize what camera and lens combo you've shot with, you can go to the search bar here and search in a huge database of different camera and lens combos. And if this specific camera and lens combo you shot with isn't available in the database, you can actually create your own. To do that you would click here, create new, and you would open this calibration target. You would basically film this with your camera, but I'll leave the instructions to that in the description. Once you've done that, you can drop your file here and then you will calibrate it using that file. But moving on, if you click this icon here, you will see it says toggle stabilization. And if you click here, you will toggle it on and off. So this is our current output file. If I click here, you will see the input file that we put into the program before any corrections were made. And to the left of that, we also have toggle stabilization overview. And what this will do is it will show you how it has transformed the footage. And as you can see, it has picked out a 16 by 9 frame within that stretched corrected image. And if you go to your export settings down in the bottom right corner, if you change your aspect ratio, let's say we want a 1 by 1 aspect ratio instead, you will instead see a 1 by 1 crop in the preview window. But let's go back to 16 by 9 and use our original resolution. But as you can see, after we've corrected our image, we're no longer able to use the full width of it if we want a 16x9 frame. And a way to fix this is actually to shoot in 4x3 instead. Ironically enough, you get more width if you shoot a higher image, but that's just because of the stretching process when you're correcting the image. So if we go and change our file to a 4x3 file instead, and as you can see, the program automatically recognizes the camera lens combo, but now, we are using our full width of the image. Since we were earlier limited by the height, and by shooting in 4x3 we have more height to work with, so after the corrections we can get a full 16x9 frame using the full width and almost the full height of the 4x3 image. But I'll toggle this off. So here is our corrected 16x9 image coming from a 4x3 image from the camera. Some of you have probably also picked up that it says stabilization basically everywhere. And that's because the main focus of this program is using gyro data combined with optical flow to stabilize images. I won't go into that in this video, I'll have another video for that. I'll put a link in the description for that one. So if you're interested in stabilization, check that video out as well after you finish this one. What you have to do now is export your video. But what you might want to do before you export is if you have shot a very long clip for example and might not want the entire thing rendered, you can actually go in here and put an in and an out and just render that part. For clips that I don't intend to keep for very long, I'll probably use a GNX HD or ProRes codec, making sure I don't lose any information since I will be rendering it multiple times. But if it's for a bigger file or something you intend to store for a longer time, you could probably render it in H.264. But all you have to do now is basically hit export. You now have a lens corrected file that you can throw into your editing software and get going. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.